On this episode of UTR, we hit Michigan's dynamic downriver area for an educational eco-sale, some delectable donuts, a pierogi princess, and a kayak tour through industry. We'll even leave Michigan just to come right back in and eat again. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Get ready to explore the cool people, places, and things that make Downriver a great destination. A visit to the Stahls Automotive Museum will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. In addition to beautiful cars, enjoy the collection of gas pumps, road signs, oil cans, and other car-related accessories. Info at stallsauto.com. There's something special about the pride, the skill, and the passion it takes to build something great. The Construction Association of Michigan, CAM, understands that passion and has been providing contractors with the resources they need since 1885. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar, Michigan. You know what I love about the downriver area? You just head south out of Detroit, follow the river, and before you know it, you start running into some really cool stuff. So that's exactly what we did. Detroit's downriver has so much to offer, from cool and vibrant cities that are right on the water to awesome eateries that'll make you wish you lived right down the street. I'm telling you, downriver has Dalden written all over it. Not to mention the fact that the marine history here would float even the biggest of boats. So get ready to ride the current south because Downriver is our next destination. Now, just in case you weren't paying attention, we're headed to the area that's Downriver from Detroit, hence the name. It's a pretty simple concept, actually. Now, what do you get when you take two great organizations, add a pinch of caring and passion to people, and then a whole bunch of water? I'll tell you what, a recipe for a better environment. The Inland Seas Education Association has joined Freshwater Forces with the Detroit International Wildlife Refuge in Trenton to help inspire all of us to take better care of our most valuable resource, the Great Lakes. And they're doing it by taking entire families out on a 77-foot research schooner to help explore and learn more about this awesome aquatic ecosystem. Now, you might remember the Detroit International Wildlife Refuge from such TV shows as Under the Radar, episode 322. That's when we first discovered this incredible place and how it's been set aside to protect the beautiful and abundant wildlife we have here. Well, now, along with the Inland Seas Education Association, they're setting sail for an up-close and fun encounter with the science that makes these lakes so, well, great. And to find out even more about what our awesome sail would entail, I sat down with Inland Sea's own Fred Sitkins. You know, Fred, since we got on board, I think I've heard the words, oh my gosh, about a hundred times already. These kids are never going to forget this experience. That's exactly what we're looking for, yep. Providing an unforgettable, inspirational experience. That's what we've always set out to do. Now tell me about the boat. You guys built this just for this? Yeah, we built this boat specifically designed for the work that we do. There's a science lab on board. We do a lot of overnight trips with students, so we built it to accommodate students overnight. Yeah. We built it to be able to accommodate all of our science gear, deploy science gear appropriately and uh, be safe. Now tell me a little bit more about Inland Seas. You guys have been around for a while, right? 30 years we've been around, 125,000 students that we've uh, brought across our decks doing this type of programming. We're a nonprofit organization out of Sutton's Bay, Michigan, dedicated to protecting the Great Lakes through education. So our work is all about trying to develop the future stewards of our Great Lakes. Well, again, these kids, this will stick with them because it's such a unique experience. And speaking of what, what are the kids doing on the ship today? What are they looking for? They're re looking at all 
portions of the Great Lakes ecosystem. So we sample the bottom so they can learn what looks, lives in the benthic region. Yeah. We sample the water column and they get to look at plankton, the base of the food chain. We collect fish and learn all about the fish population in our Great Lakes. And today we're doing a special uh, trawl. We're doing a manta trawl where we're looking for microplastics in the Great Lakes. Now you guys got together with the Detroit International Wildlife Refuge. That's a great thing to do too because what they're doing is extraordinary. That's right. You can't do this kind of work without collaborative partners in the field and there's not a better partner in this region than the Wildlife Refuge and we're just honored to be able to work with them and, and help to uh, help them further their mission. What a great gig. This yeah, is. This, is, this is a good job for sure, yeah. <laughs> Nothing like inspiring kids, seeing kids curious, excited. And I just love working with this generation. There's such a caring generation of young people that, that genuinely are concerned about doing the right thing, not only for their friends, but for the planet. Well, I feel like a kid just being on the boat, and I'm actually learning something too, so see, I, even I can be taught. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think your viewers are going to be too surprised that you feel like a kid, don't they? Yeah, yeah, good point. <laughs> From the families and the volunteers to the crew and even you, everyone's takeaway from this day was way cool, especially for the kids. They conducted scientific experiments, learned all about sailing, and as you can see, had an absolute blast. Hey Jude, don't be afraid, but there's a bug right there. Is that your bug? Did you catch him? No. Oh, he's not part of the pro science project? or? No. So you wouldn't mind if I picked him up and put him on your arm? Look at that. Oh, look how brave they are. You guys are future scientists. Don't you think? Yeah. Having fun? Yeah. Want to jump in the water with me? No, no. Yeah, me either. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Are you making seaweed salad? No, we're trying to find plastic. Oh, that would not be good in a salad at all. No. Well, what would you find? Did you find anything good? We just... I found um, a tiny black piece of plastic. Yeah. Good job, good job. It's not good when you find plastic, but it's good to know it's there because we need to get rid of it, right? Right. Right? Yeah. Right? Right. Oh, you know that. <laughs> what an awesome day on the water we all had. It was full of fun, learning, and lots of newfound friends who will hopefully help spread the word about this important work. With people and places like the Inland Seas Education Association and the Detroit International Wildlife Refuge enlightening all of us, our planet has a great chance to survive and thrive. And let's face it, we all need to do more to help keep the Great Lakes and our environment clean. And I plan on doing my part right now. Well, as soon as I'm done cleaning up the boat, I guess you're supposed to buy a ticket. Oh, look, a barnacle. <laughs> Well, after a hearty sail, there's nothing like a satisfying snack. So we went to Wyandotte for two places, one that's completely sweet and one that can be more on the savory side. But I say we start with the completely sweet. Welcome to Sugar Donuts, a place where the donuts are so sweet, the word sugar has an extra R on it. If you're looking for donuts that are creative, colorful, unusual, and just plain outside the box, you'll for sure want to take home a box of these. From fruity pebbles and PBJs to maple bacon and even assorted cereal selections, these donuts are crazy. Crazy good. Stuart Fox is the mastermind that you'll find behind these awesome edibles. And his sweet success happened, well, kind of by accident. Now, I know you're a serious chef. Yeah. But I think these donuts have become your X-Men power. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, they're going good. Is yeah. it true that it all started by accident? Yeah, we got a building for catering, bakery, yeah. and, you know, we just utilized the storefront, you know. It was just, well, we're not using the storefront, let me do donuts and coffee out of it. You know, so it's it pretty simple. And boom. Yeah, you know, kind of picked up. Well, I think it's because you do creative things with donuts that most people aren't expecting. Yeah, yeah, you know, craft donuts with the cannoli cream, peanut butter and jelly, um, fruity pebble. Uh, sorted cereal, you know, chocolate-covered pretzel, salted caramel, different things, fun things. <laughs> that sounds like a candy store, it doesn't sound like a yeah, donut shop. Yeah, so it's been fun. Where'd you get the ideas for the flavors and stuff? And I just always enjoyed donuts, so, you know, stuff that I might have wanted to try somewhere that they didn't have, you know. A little bit of everything. Did you think this would take off like it did? No, I think, you know, we got a lot of local support downriver, Wyandotte, River Rouge, uh, you know, everyone downriver. And then uh, you caught like a social media tidal wave too, you know. 
So everybody's been great. You know, we know we got a great product, but everybody's been super supportive, too. Did you grow up downriver area? I did, Lincoln Park, yeah. What do you yeah. love about this whole area? It's community. You know, the whole downriver area is a big group of cities that feels like one big city. You know, when we opened up this shop, we had to line out the door before we opened up. You know, people were outside wrapped in blankets, you know, waiting for us to open up. <laughs> like so, it's a KISS concert or something. Yeah, it was like Black Friday. People were outside wrapped in blankets. So it's just, you know, how much it took off, you know, the love for donuts, you know. Yeah, well, it must be weird because you're a serious chef and you worked hard at your craft and all of a sudden you go, you know, I think I'll make some donuts and boom, it just yeah. explodes. Right, right. That's pretty much how it happened. I actually read that you sold 1,200 donuts in one day. Yeah, yeah, Punchkey Day. You know, and then the day that we opened up here, maybe give or take a little bit, but yeah, it's a fun day, fun, crazy day. Worked through the whole night. That's a lot of sugar. Or, or... <laughs> yeah, right, right. We had to stretch it out. You know? <laughs> so. Well, proof positive that these donuts are everything everyone says they are is the fact that the fellers and I witnessed family after family after family frequent this place. And we saw lots of smiles, too. And I think another secret reason these donuts are so good is because Stuart's mom even helps out. Thanks, Mom. So if you want to experience the next evolutionary step in these tasty treats, treat yourself to a few sugar donuts. It just might become your new happy place. Mmm, donuts. Well, now that we've tamed your sweet tooth, time to sample a few more savory selections. And for that, we hit the Little Progy and Crepe Kitchen at 125 Elm Street. And if that address sounds a little familiar, you'll find out why in a minute. Drew Gear is the young entrepreneur who, at the ripe old age of 20, cast her fate to the wind, a few pierogies in a pan, and hasn't looked back since. Why is it this place seems so strangely familiar to me? No idea. It's like you could have shot in here before. Yes, and we were here actually season <laughs> one when this was Joe's Hamburgers. And Jeremy, who has now moved on mm -hmm. to bigger and better things, well, just a larger place. There we go. But, um, but you worked here back then, right? I did, yeah. And you made pierogies out of his kitchen here. I did, at about 15 years old. Seriously? Mm -hmm. And you decided all of a sudden one day you want to start your own business, or did Jeremy kind of push you out the door? There was an extra little nudge there, yeah. <laughs> he kind of boosted me a little bit to choose to go into this industry. Um, at the time, I was going to our local Roosevelt High School, and I just didn't really enjoy school. I was never the school type. Um, I was going to college for a semester of EMT school, and I would come back to work and tell Jeremy how much I hated it, and I wasn't happy with it. And he's like, well, why don't you start a restaurant? You've been working here since you were a kid. You know, give it a try. Since you were a kid, you were a kid. Right. And, you know, I would just, I was nervous, you know? Well, it's not as easy as just starting a restaurant, right? And he's like, sure it is. So lo and behold, he would help me get the paperwork together and kind of start working on our menus and the logos and get everything set in stone. And then sure enough, after he left, we were ready to open up just a few months afterwards. Well, you started this, this is you were, what, 20? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, when I was 20, I think I was still mowing lawns <laughs> and delivering papers. That's amazing. Thank you. Well, what got you interested in pierogies to begin with? Um, really, Jeremy's the one who taught me how to basically start from scratch. We had um, everything we do here is homemade from scratch, made here in-house. We don't get anything shipped in. You do some really creative things with the flavors, too, with a pierogies and you got like a cheeseburger pierogi? Mm -hmm. or? Pizza, mac and cheese, barbecue chicken. Really? Mm-hmm. Pierogies are fun because you can put anything inside. Um, when did you add on the crepes? Because that's, isn't that French? Yes, um, which actually in French too. So before opening, we kind of thought pierogies just on its own was a little, mm, you know, can you open a business and survive just on pierogies alone? Right. So that's when we got to thinking, well, maybe crepes would be a good pair. You've got your savory pierogies, and then we can mingle in some sweet crepes, and they would mesh well together. Well, sure enough, yeah. great takeoff. Now, how has the community sort of embraced you? Um, the community is great. I truly don't believe if we weren't here in Downriver, we wouldn't have boomed into what we are today. Everybody Downriver really wants to see you succeed rather than fighting to see who can get to the top. It, it's funny you said it because we discovered that season one when we had Jeremy on the show when this was a burger place. And um, there is a real Downriver really has a, it's like a big family. Everybody's mm -hmm. in it together. Everybody knows everybody. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of knowing, does Jeremy come over here for dessert ever? Yeah. 
he gets his famous um, grape jelly and powdered sugar. You should actually put one of his sliders in one of your pierogies. We should. It's a good idea. We'll have to collab with him after this is over. Well, it won't be hard. He's sitting right over there. Well, to prove that the art of proper pierogi preparing isn't for the general population, I stepped back into the kitchen to demonstrate just how Polish I'm not. Here goes nothing. So how do you make a pierogi? All right, start with the dough. Start with the dough. Spray Some it. Some water. water. Right. Add the filling. And the filling is? Potato cheddar. Potato cheddar. All righty. You're going to actually make me do this. Mm -hmm. The flavor's potato cheddar. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming it has potato and cheddar in it. Mm -hmm. OK, good. OK, now you fold it <laughs> over. Fold it over. OK. Secure it. Secure it. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to crimp it. All righty. Crimping. And now we fork it. Fork it. Yours is beautiful. And this proves that I am not at all Polish. It's good. Well, for an Irish Italian. I don't know what was more satisfying the pierogies and crepes we aggressively consumed, or watching a young, creative, and motivated person like Drew make her mark right here in Michigan. If you want to support local and at the same time get a belly full of yum, head to the Little Pierogi and Crepe Kitchen in Wyandotte. Oh, and while you're supporting local, you may as well head over to Joe's Hamburgers and get a slider or two. Jeremy won't mind at all. Well, since we've been talking about food for the last few minutes, I think it's about time we work up another appetite. And for that, we've got something pretty cool and pretty unusual. Now imagine kayaking on a beautiful summer day with some of your new best friends. Now imagine doing it around one of the biggest industrial complexes in the world. This is the Industrial Rouge Tour, put on by Riverside Kayak Connections. They do it only once a year, and it's absolutely fascinating. What's it like to be dwarfed by industry as you paddle past the Ford Rouge complex? Well, thanks to our guide and fearless leader, Tiffany Vandehey, we're all about to find out. Would you classify yourself as an avid kayaker or just a regular kayaker? No, I'm pretty avid kayaker. Okay. How long has Riverside been doing this tour? Um, probably 11 or 12 years. That long? The Rouge paddle. Mm -hmm. And you just do it one day a year? We do it once a year. Mm -hmm. right. Probably why there's so many people here. You should do it more <laughs> often. Um, now, what can we expect on the tour? Um, you're going to see a lot of industry, possibly a freighter. I heard that there's one might be going through today. Oh, awesome. Um, so, and it is a fairly calm paddle until we get out to the Detroit River. So, I was going to ask you what skill level you need, because my skill level is very low on many things. So it's, so it's an easy paddle. This one's an easy paddle. I mean, we'll be on the Detroit River for five to 10 minutes. And if there's a wind, that can be a little bit more challenging. Right. But th by that point, you've been in the boat for two hours, so it won't be so bad. So. What would you tell somebody who might not be interested in doing this tour why it's so fascinating? The Rouge River was the actual the course of the river was changed by Henry Ford so he could get things up to his, his manufacturing plant. So you're seeing like where the car industry started or you know in the very early stages and how things have changed. You paddle under I-75. That's kind of a really cool experience. You're starting to see how wildlife is coming back in those areas. So there's definitely you'll probably see some birds along the way, herons, you'll see people fishing. I mean just a lot of different um, not just the industry, but also some nature and just how people are living along the river. Now, you guys do a whole variety of tours, right, at Riverside? Correct. We do everything. We focus on, well, most of the Detroit River, but because this, the Rouge goes into the Detroit River, but we do tours from Lake St. Clair all the way down to Lake Erie, Detroit Historical Canal tours around Belle Isle. We paddle from Detroit to Wyandotte. Wow. We do the lower river, Grosile, Wyandotte, Trenton. Is there a lot of recreational kayaking on the river here? It's really starting to take off. I and mean, when we, they first asked, Friends of the Rouge approached us like 11, 12 years ago. We did a tour, and I didn't think anybody wanted to do it. Definitely a lot more interest. And they're starting to now create launches that'll be along the, the uh, lower section of the Rouge River. Now, how many kayakers are with us today? There will be a, about 25 today total. Boy, it's like a wrangling cats. How are you <laughs> going to keep us all together? Well, luckily, the river is very calm. It's very calm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And we will have safety boaters that will be out with us to help everybody. So. Oh, good. I'll need my own safety boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough talking about kayaking. It was time for us to put our crafts in the water and our paddles to work. And what a wonderfully surreal paddle this is. Sitting in your kayak, you're overwhelmingly dwarfed by some of the most gigantic industrial structures imaginable. 
It's almost like you're slowly passing through the belly of a giant mechanical beast with all the sights, sounds, and smells of progress. And at the end of the tour, you paddle right out onto the Detroit River with incredible views of the city skyline, the awesome Ambassador Bridge, and monster freighters. It's a pretty grandiose end to a terrific tour. If you're looking for a completely different kind of kayaking experience, get a hold of the folks at the Riverside Kayak Connection and take the Industrial Rouge Tour or one of their other fun tours. You'll learn a lot, laugh a lot, and of course, work up the appetite necessary for our next segment. Now this next segment gets a little weird and kind of confusing, so stick with me because I think I almost got it. There's this restaurant in Michigan, and the only way to drive to it is to drive into Ohio and then back into Michigan again. <laughs> I still don't get it. Do you guys get it? Well, believe it or not, such a restaurant exists because Weber's Waterfront Restaurant sits on a peninsula that sticks out into Lake Erie. And the only way to drive onto that peninsula is to drive down into Ohio and then back up the peninsula where it crosses back into Michigan territory. I know it's kind of weird, but this is UTR and food's involved. So with GPS in hand and appetites engaged, we drove south across the Ohio border and then back up the Lost Peninsula to Weber's waterfront. And to find out more about this strange but true food phenomenon, I sat down with proud proprietors Todd and Stacy Merriman. Now, is it true this whole thing started in 1933 with Sunday beer sales? <laughs> yes. Right. Seriously? Yep. Couldn't sell uh, beer Sunday. in Ohio, and the um, Webers that own the properties said, hey, let's build a little carry out and sell beer. So they and just went every, right, they just went right about the line? Everybody gets right. came here to get beer. They would uh, take their beer and they would uh, sit out in the parking lot and pop open their beers and just drink out in the parking lot. I read that the parking lot at that time was like paved with bottle caps. Bottle caps. Yep. They actually had openers hanging from the trees that were out there. <laughs> <laughs> In the tree? Yep. Because you guys are literally 150 feet from the state line? Yes. On this peninsula? Right? Yes. And speaking of this peninsula, I can't think of a more beautiful place to sit and have dinner. Oh my yeah, gosh. It's beautiful out here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and the fact that you can boat here or drive here. Well, now, that's the only way you can get here without leaving Michigan is to boat here. Is to boat here, right. right. Otherwise, you have to go through Ohio to get to us. All right, we did that. Yeah. I felt guilty, but, <laughs> but, but we toughed it out. Um, but it's really neat that people can actually dock right here, right. come up and have dinner. Yep. Then yeah. head home. And head home. And this is a huge boating community out here, so most people that are out here in Point Place have some sort of boat or kayak or whatever, so marinas everywhere. Did you guys come here as kids, or? Um, actually, um, we just took it over from my parents. Ah, so it's in the family. It's in the family. My parents bought it in 1980. So, oh, so I've been here since I was two. Oh, so you grew up here? I grew up here, yes. Oh my gosh. Do you guys live on the peninsula? We do not live in the peninsula, Do you live on no. a boat? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we wish. <laughs> we wish, but no, not a whole lot of time for boating when we're here, but um, we live just out across the border in point, this Point Place area that's connected, so I grew up out here my entire life. Well, it must be neat carrying on a tradition that's been going on since, you know, yeah. the century before the century. I mean, <laughs> that's a long time it's, ago. It's been a long time. This is the 87th year. Now, what do you guys hang your aprons on? Is it mainly seafood here, or? It's mostly yes. seafood. A lot of Lake Erie, yeah. walleye, perch, perch, yellow lake perch. That's our main items. So. Last question, Michigan or Ohio State? <laughs> oh, you're not gonna like that answer. <laughs> Our daughter goes Our daughter's Ohio at Ohio State, State right ah. now. <laughs> We're Buckeyes. <laughs> oh, that's okay, you're in Michigan, we still love you. Yes. Well, before the fellers and I venture back through Buckeye country, we thought it wise to partake in all we talked about. So we kicked back, made some new friends, and enjoyed a first class meal. What an awesome and peaceful place to relax and refuel. And all the folks at Weber's Waterfront were wonderful. It was totally worth the whole confusing trip. Just remember though, unless you've got a boat, you'll have to leave Michigan to get to this place. But don't worry, the people in Ohio are really nice. They even speak English. Bonus. So don't forget to float down river occasionally because you'll find some of the coolest people, places, and things Michigan has to offer. <laughs> or my name isn't Tom Dalden. 
Did I pronounce that right? Is it Dalden? Okay. We all have one, that perfect spot, a special place we go to smooth out the ripples of the day. Our perfect spot is calling. Our perfect spot is Pure Michigan. Your trip begins at Michigan.org. A visit to the Stahls Automotive Museum will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. In addition to beautiful cars, enjoy the collection of gas pumps, road signs, oil cans, and other car-related accessories. Info at StahlsAuto.com. There's something special about the pride, the skill, and the passion it takes to build something great. The Construction Association of Michigan, CAM, understands that passion and has been providing contractors with the resources they need since 1885. 